Okay, so I'm going to do some cool stuff in Maya. Now, what we're going to do is create a curved disk. Now, to do that, we need to remove unneeded edges, extrude them, merge them, edit them, bevel them, and use the multi-cut tool. Okay, so in Maya, I'm going to show you how to use a torus to create a very flat, very curved shape. So, this is a torus, and as you can see, it's a donut. Very simple. Uh, obviously, as always, as long as your cursor is at zero, zero, that's where the actual shape will be built. First thing I'm going to do is, in order to make this nice and flat, I'm going to head into Attribute Editor, go into just P Torus 1, and I'm going to take away its thickness, uh, basically its Y axis, and I'm going to flatten it down to 0.25. There we go, I've got a very flat torus now. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into Obviously, it's a few more of its settings, and then I'm going to actually change its subdivision height. I'm going to set this at 21. Now, what that does is it hasn't actually made it thicker. What it's done is it's added additional polygons, and you can see now I've got coming through the z axis, you can see it intersects halfway between two of them. That's great because I need an edge to whatever I'm creating. Okay, going on from there, I'm going to actually find roughly the tallest point on this. So basically, the vertex that covers its tallest point, which looks like it's probably going to be this one. So, back into my modeling, selecting an edge. And I think if I head for this one there and double click, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to... As you can see, move inwards along these. Same as underneath, I'm going to start heading out again. And so I've basically got all my vertices that I want to get rid of. And then I just hit delete. Now you'll see that what it's done is it kind of created this weird thrilled pattern. But don't worry, I'm going to get rid of that as well. I just very quickly going around. Now sometimes you'll find that Maya will let you kind of double click and it'll select a nice ring of these. Other times it'll select the whole object. Uh, in this instance it's not letting me do that when I hold shift. So I'm just going to have to go through and delete them by hand. But there we go. I've now got a torus that's lost its insides. From there I'm going to join up the top and bottom ones. So again back to the edges going to select this edge and I'm going to control A and get my extruding tool up and running. Then I'm going to pull it. As you can see, I'm pulling these inwards until I get them nice and joined together. Basically so they don't fold back outwards. And then I'm going to try hold shift and I'm going to get them all selected and then I'm going to head up here to the merge and center tool and then basically it's join them all together. As you can see, I've got here kind of nice curved upwards point. I can actually select that individual edge. If I'm going to move, I can pull it upwards or downwards if I want to. Okay, I'm going to slightly have it further downwards because I want this top to be quite flat. Okay, so, so far, if we have a look, we've got what looks like a nice kind of outer edge effect. I know it's a bit jagged around here, but you can actually fix that further in the attribute editor of it by just adding more subdivisions or taking them away. And as you can see, though, it's best to decide how many subdivisions you want early on before we start extruding things. I'm going to keep it like that for now anyway. Okay, moving underneath, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to get my edges select them. Uh, before I start extruding them inwards, I'm just going to change their height just a tiny bit so that they start to curve upwards. Again, extrude them inwards and then back to my edge selector and then merge them again. Select that one and then I can, if I want to, kind of merge that in and out. You can actually find out when you're hitting the top part because you'll start to get this, this kind of black 
developing this black hole and that's because it's popping out the top now so we just got to get it to a nice point that's all where it starts to look like it's curving inwards now to be quite honest this is probably good enough for a shield that will be seen in the distance it's probably not going to be that good at anything that's seen close up uh, but if you're just painting on a texture onto something like this, then it shouldn't really be a problem, whether or not it's a shield, a bin lid. Uh, you could probably even start developing uh, organic things like shells using this technique as well. You just have to plan where you put the uh, extrusions and beveling to create the ridges of the shell. But from there, you could quite easily just go in and take, create a texture for this and map it over. So at the moment, I've got a disc that I can work with and do something to. Now, what you will notice is the curvature, although it's quite good at the start, it really goes just like flat all the way along. It just doesn't look very um, appealing. And that is because the edges are, there's a lot of edges towards the outer side of the disc. As we go further in, it's just these flat faces all the way around. You can actually see when I go down, it's just really far too flat. What's actually happening is because there's only this vertex here, and then these flat panels on the outside, all I'm really getting, and I can show you this by moving this up, is basically lots of flat edges. I can make that, but basically all I've got is flatness all the way to the centre, and I don't want that. There's two ways to fix this. You can bevel it, so you can keep selecting the inner edge, and keep beveling it and creating them. Now that's great for creating a nice gradual curve in towards the center. However, you're gonna create potentially a lot more polygons than you really need. And my preference on this one really is to go up to the edit mesh and edit the edge flow. And that forces your edges in towards the center basically on the, this kind of disc. Now, once you've got some of these edges forced towards the center, we can actually start using the beveling technique a bit more effectively. Because now it's making them quicker, it's making them more compacted, but we're not using as many polygons if we did it for the full thing. Again, now we've got slight more curvature. I mean, it's hard to see. It's very subtle, but you're getting the curvature. And we can also start to notice now that we've actually got an indent in our shield. And that is because when I created this here, this joining point in this vertex, it was slightly downwards. And that meant that at a certain point, the curve started to stop going upwards and headed downwards towards the middle and that was because I started with a torus which is fine because actually there's a lot of flat discs that curve at the start go up and head downwards in the middle if you want to alter any of these anyway you can actually play around and just move them up and then you can start changing the ones that you want to be creating a deeper incline or a shallower incline see so as I'm doing it, though, I'm getting a smoother curve than I had before. Of course, the more edges you add, the smoother the curve. And that's really a personal choice about how detailed you need to make it. If you've got this right in front of someone, well, of course, we need the detail. If it's very far away, they don't really need to see that. And as you can see, they're getting the impression of a dimple in the middle. One thing you could do with this as well is if you actually selected that middle vertex again, you could kind of create a protruding nipple from it if you needed to, which again is a feature of some things in the center. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm quite happy for it to be slightly indented inwards. So that's how we do the next part. Once we've got this disc and that's how we start getting them on natural curve to the top, you can do it on the underside as well if you want. However, if it's not going to be seen, you've got to ask yourself is it worth adding all of these extra edges to it 
and that's really judgment call basically depending on what kind of scene that you're making but as you can see add them in and then if you want to really make that start moving inwards and very very carefully just get that working there we go and it's going far more inwards now than it was before and there we go we now have a more curved naturally curved surface uh, the thicker you made this to begin with the more extreme the curve it's very simple but you can again play around with it and put a more extreme curve on if you want to so now that i've got my disc what i want to do is i want to kind of give the impression that this has taken a bit of a ding to it now what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to actually use the cutting tool uh, my little vertices and a little bit of beveling to actually create an impression that it's taken a knock so how am i going to do that well this is actually nice and simple i'm going to select an edge to begin with so if i select that edge there and run it around the whole place and just do a bit of beveling because I want to get some areas I want to get this closer together in particular areas I don't have to do the whole ring actually I can just do a few areas like that now I've got a nice little area that I can cut into get my cutting tool and I'm gonna start maybe over here I'm gonna go up a bit across I'm gonna create a jagged pattern You know just the right amount you'll see how it uses those uh, intersecting edges as a kind of cut off point okay now I've got myself this little jagged area and from there I can select individual vertices and I can pull them downwards or upwards I'm going to sort of indent some of these now. You can see what starts to happen is we get a little area that's higher or lower than the rest of it. I can really play around with these individually to create that appearance. The more of these you have to play with, the more of these little vertices you have to play with, the more extreme the damage can appear or the more detailed it will appear. I feel like I need to change the points as well I can pull them up and down I can decide to move this point across and it will start to create a kind of irregular pattern on this you can see it's only small but you can just see how the light from the graphics engine is just catching it to suggest that just here it's taken a bang it's taken a dent now if you really wanted to go into detail you could start to think about the shape of the object that could have hit it and then go from there that's perfectly okay you want it to look realistic again I could put use my cutting tool do it around here and again same basic idea select one of these pull it inwards if I need to I'll go across to these ones again move them outwards move them downwards create that impression that this thing has taken a few knocks and you can see it's subtle it's not massive it's not got gaping holes in it but it's got those little bits of textures created by the the, the object itself and a graphics engine in something like Unreal Engine would know to add shadow so if you painted the texture all the same color it would add little shadows depending on the light source onto this 